Conceptualized as early as the 2250s and finally brought into service near the end of the 23rd century, the Miranda-class light cruiser stands as one of the most successful and long-serving starship designs in the history of the United Federation of Planets. At a length of 237.6 meters and a dry mass of 150,000 metric tons, the space frame of the Miranda class deviates quite drastically from its contemporaries in the Constitution and Excelsior classes. The ship is built around its primary saucer section, with twin warp nacelles suspended beneath the ventral hull on short pylons. At the time of its commissioning, the Miranda class carried a standard crew complement of 360 across 11 decks and was primarily employed as a mid-range survey vessel and system security craft across the frontier of explored space. The Miranda is armed with six Type 7 phaser banks and four photon torpedo launchers, with some tactical refits also being equipped with twin pulsed phaser cannons. The Miranda's torpedo launchers are housed within a unique weapons pod, suspended at the center of an arching support structure across the light cruiser's dorsal hull. Like many other elements of the Miranda's design, this roll bar structure was completely modular and could be replaced with additional sensor systems, cargo space, tractor projectors, or other situational equipment when necessary. Across the incredibly long service life of the Miranda class, the vessel's inherent versatility made it into an integral part of the Federation Starfleet. Modified variants of the Miranda frame were used as dedicated hospital ships, diplomatic envoys, and even cargo freighters, with some Miranda configurations even proving successful enough to be commissioned as starship classes in their own right, like in the case of the Soyuz-class mid-range science vessel. A standard 23rd century Miranda class was capable of maintaining an FTL cruising speed of warp 7 under normal circumstances, but consecutive refits across the Miranda's career eventually allowed ships of the class to reach as high as warp 9 in the late 2370s. The ship offered fairly impressive maneuverability at impulse speeds, often outturning the larger mainstay warships of most galactic powers. Tactically, the ships were most often employed in groups, and this practice only became more common as the class entered the later decades of its career. By the 2370s, the now ancient Miranda class remained one of the most commonly employed designs in the Federation, though efforts had been made to begin replacing the dated vessels with ships of the newer Sabre and Norway classes, the process of decommissioning the hundreds of Miranda class starships still serving vital logistical roles was predicted to take decades. This issue was sharply rendered irrelevant by the outbreak of the Dominion War. The Miranda class served prominently in the conflict with the Dominion, and became something of an unfortunate symbol of the Federation's unreadiness for full-scale interstellar warfare. The ships that had once been the cutting edge of Starfleet were now horribly outmatched by almost every class of vessel involved in the Dominion War. Starfleet loaded the ships with only skeleton crews, and deployed them in large numbers to mitigate their individual shortcomings, but in the role of an improvised frigate on the front lines of an unexpected war, the now 120-year-old Miranda class performed hopelessly with ships of the class falling by the dozen in almost every engagement. Though the vessel's far overextended service life ultimately turned the Miranda class into a liability, the traits of reliance and versatility that had originally made the craft indispensable to Starfleet have not been forgotten. Alongside the Excelsior class, the Miranda is remembered as an important chapter in Starfleet history, and as a vessel that carried the ideals of the United Federation of Planets to a thousand worlds across almost 150 years of dedicated service. Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.